Now with some instant reaction to Walmart's results, let's bring in Charlie O'Shea. He's a retail analyst at Moody's. And, and Charlie, um, these are very strong numbers. And I think what's particularly interesting, if you look at Walmart versus Home Depot this morning, both those companies um, taking huge efforts and, and, and really making sure that they're trying to take care of employees. But you see that Walmart was actually able to beat the street's expectations, both on the bottom and the top line with this. Um, what, what's your take on what you're hearing? Well, first, thanks for having me, and I hope everyone's doing well. Um, it, this was expected. I think that when when we've seen what Costco's been able to do, and, and Costco's a pretty good comp for Walmart, at least in the U.S., and Costco's been popping some big sales numbers as well, we knew that Walmart would be at least that good just because it's – it's a more frequent shopper base, and Walmart's food business, consumables business, is driving the top line and also driving some of the softening on the margin side because those are lower margin categories. But this was something, you know, Walmart's the bellwether name in U.S. retail. And in a situation like this, you can learn an awful lot about how the consumer's feeling and shopping patterns when you look at Walmart's results. And it was you know, it was in, instructive and informative to see on the margin side exactly what's been going on and where all these expenses are hitting, how much they're spending, and some of the impact on on revenue and margin of, you know, the soft or the the uh, the lessening of the store hours and the traffic, et cetera. So, this is an impressive quarter for Walmart under really extreme circumstances. Charlie, you said that this gives us a good idea of what's happening to the U.S. consumer. And, and Walmart has always been one of those stories that can go either way, where when good times are there, Walmart does well. When, when it's bad times with the economy, Walmart tends to do well because it's a, a discount retailer. What, what can you learn about not just the consumer, but about the economy overall based on these numbers? Well, we're, we're clearly in a need is winning over wants environment right now. I mean, we're, Target's going to report tomorrow, and and based on what Target said in April, you know, the non-discretionary categories are really driving things. And Walmart has a very high mix of non-discretionary. The food, consumables, grocery equivalent business there is approaching $300 billion in the U.S. by our calculations when you include SAM. So you see the stock up effect. You see people, you know, really doubling down on in-store pickup doubling down online, 70-plus percent online sales growth on that base, which is over $20 billion in the U.S., is a staggering number. The, the, the pickup model that Walmart's rolled out is benefiting consumers immensely because people, you know, there are a lot of people out there that are afraid to go anywhere and afraid to get out of their cars and actually go into a retail store. So Walmart's been able to flex everything at its disposal. You know, every arrow in the quiver is being used right now with faster delivery, everything that the company is doing, they've really doubled down. And I'd like to call out something that Doug McMillan said at the analyst meeting back, which seems like eons ago, on February 18th in New York, where they were talking about what they were doing in China. So Walmart got a kind of a preview, which isn't the, maybe the best word, but they got a little insight into, into what was potentially going to happen in the U.S., and he made a, a point of emphasizing that we need to keep our stores open. We are involved in the communities. They need us. And we're going to react like we do. And he used the hurricane example. And that's exactly what the company's done. They've really doubled down to make sure that they've got as much as they can control, because they're still out of stocks, as much as they can to, to make sure the consumer is being taken care of. To continue that storm analogy, if they're operating like they're in a hurricane, how, how do you think consumer patterns will change once this storm passes? I mean, are these lasting changes, people starting to order from home using Walmart.com, maybe picking up at the stores? Are those the type of patterns that you think continue once the virus is either cured or, or dissipates? Absolutely. I think that what you're seeing today are a lot of consumers that have never used in-store pickup, have never really ordered online. You know, we were going into the pandemic, we we're at high teens, potentially online retail penetration in the U.S., and that number is obviously going to be much higher. I think what you're seeing is, you know, we're, we're years are turning into months with respect to how fast the online business is expanding. And I think the expense levels are going to, you know, magnify that. And, and I think as the consumer, again, 
gets more comfortable with someone picking their groceries and putting them in their car or in their in the back of their SUV, ordering things online that they may never have ordered before, ordering from online retailers or retailers online that they've never used before because they really don't have a choice right now. I think you'll see online growing more, much more rapidly than we thought it would prior to this, obviously. And I think you're going to see a lot of the brick-and-mortar retailers demonstrating to the consumers that, hey, it's not just an Amazon world here online. We're here as well. We can deliver. We can handle your orders. And we also have these stores that you can utilize for faster, uh, for faster pickup and faster delivery of your products. Hey, Charlie, I know you tend to focus on the corporate debt side, but I, I want to call your attention to a chart that we were just showing a moment ago. I don't know if you're watching on TV right now, but if you're looking at Walmart versus the Dow over the last year, uh, Walmart shares up by 32 percent versus the Dow being down four and a half percent. I think that was the chart we were just looking at. You can see that Walmart's numbers have, have gone steadily up since the beginning part of March. Uh, and this is just a question towards valuation. The market knows that Walmart's going to be a winner. H how much more um, support w should it be getting from investors jumping in here? How much of the valuation is already taken into account? Well, I, I think from a fundamental perspective, and that's where I'll have to move this, um, I think Walmart fundamentally is running and ahead of the pandemic. I've covered the company for 17 and a half years now, and I I've never seen the company operating better. And I think that their you know, recognition of how well this company does what it does and how effective those investments that they made, you know, they started making in October of 2015 during that epic meeting at the stock exchange. I think the, you know, the market, both on the credit and I think on the equity side, is recognizing that these investments paid off and they're going to continue to pay off. And without those investments, Walmart is not near where it, where it is today. It would not be handling this crisis as well as it's handling it. And on the other side, the consumer wouldn't be benefiting the extent it is today.